So I watched Dune Part 2 last Monday and I absolutely loved it. I think it was a great adaptation from the books, especially with all the extra fight scenes and the real tense moments, one of which that I really particularly enjoyed was the arena scene on Gyedi Prime. While we see a little bit of him beforehand, this arena scene essentially served as the grand introduction to the danger that is Fade Rautha. I want to explore the colouring in this scene and the choice of infrared light, which I found was particularly interesting and I don't see that a lot in movies. And more so than that, I want to see if we can sort of justify it with a little bit of Dune lore. I was in that theatre for three hours, so time kind of just stopped for me, but I think it was about halfway through when the scene started. And in this scene, we see Fade Ralph fight off three prisoners, sort of gladiator style, in an arena on Yeti Prime. And as characters move from shade to pure sunlight, you sort of notice that the colour in them just fades away and they're just bathed in black and white light. And most people won't realise this, but if you work in physics or optics, you'll kind of pick up on this pretty quickly. But it, the, the actual scene itself isn't shot in just black and white monochromatic visible light. It's actually shot in the infrared, and you can actually tell this because some of the features on the human, such as Fade Routh's eyes, which are typically white, you know, the sclera is white, invisible light actually appear very dark grey and even black, such as the case of Fade Routh's mouth. Most cameras do actually detect infrared light to a varying extent, especially film cameras which are used in major productions like Dune 2. And actually, in the case for Dune 2, what they did to achieve this infrared sort of uh, effect was they actually took a regular camera and removed the infrared filter that would usually block out infrared light and instead they added blocking um, added filters to the monochromatic light that we usually pick up so you only actually get infrared. Infrared light is light or electromagnetic radiation if we want to be very fancy with wavelengths longer than that of red so we're talking about 750 to a thousand sort of nanometer sort of wavelengths. I'm guessing that most production cameras and IR cameras that are used in films and whatnot would actually use the sort of shorter wavelength side of this, so the 750 nanometer sort of area, which we typically call near infrared. We use a lot of infrared on space imaging and on space telescopes and observatories, relating this a little bit more back to the actual topic of my channel. Um, one of the, probably the best example of this is the James Webb Space Telescope, which has four infrared based instruments, um, one of which my university actually worked on and built parts of which I believe it was Miri so that's the mid infrared camera actually it was an open day that I worked on that some some ambassador or whoever was in charge of the cameras just took a picture of me looking really solemnly at the Miri replica you could just see like the sort of sadness in my face although I was actually having a really fun time they just took a really bad picture I thought this was a really momentous scene and it really highlights the inhumanity that the Harkonnens are really characterised by in the books. I mean, I think the use of infrared was really great because it tends to make skin a little bit more translucent and dull, and so it kind of looked like Fade had had the, the life drained out of him in a way, you know, he didn't have any colour, essentially. So I think it could also have a bit of a touch of realism when we look at you know, the actual world, Gyedi Prime, as detailed by Frank Herbert. So Gyedi Prime is situated around the star of Fyukai B. I can't actually tell if it was based off of Beta of Fyukai or 3-6 of Fyukai B, which is part of a triple system, a triple star system. Um, but regardless, it doesn't really matter because they're very similar stars in terms of temperature, and that's all we really care about for this. So um, Beta of Fyukai and 3-6 of Fyukai B uh, have temperatures of 4,500 and 4,800 Kelvin respectively, and so if we do a little cheeky beans law, um, we can find that their peak wavelengths are 644 and 600 nanometers respectively, putting them unsurprisingly in red light because both of these stars are red dwarfs or um, K-type stars, which some people might refer to them as. So if we actually have a look at a black body curve, we can see that most of the star's output is in the infrared, um, so the choice of infrared was, you know, pretty good there. <laughs> that being said, I feel like this kind of world building and sort of concept in general kind of falls apart when you remember that humans can't see infrared, so all of these cool infrared effects, you know, when you go outside and are just washed by all this infrared light, so to speak, uh, doesn't really matter because nobody can see it. So if we were to look at it with a more realistic point of view, 
I would feel that because it's quite a dim and red star, outside life on Gedi Prime would essentially just look like a dimly lit and slightly redder version of, you know, Earth or Caladan or Arrakis. Um, so that's kind of a bit annoying, although there is also the possibility that humans could have developed an infrared cone, although I feel like that would be more unlikely, mainly because currently humans um, well, some female people have actually developed ultraviolet cones, which we, we call them tetrachromats. So I feel like we would more likely develop ultraviolet cones than infrared ones. That being said, if humans were capable of completely seeing, you know, near-infrared and maybe even mid-infrared, I think that this sort of idea, the way that they filmed it, is a really, really good and realistic venture into that sort of, that view that people might have if they were able to see infrared. The Baron also mentions the Black Sun, and we do quite literally see a Black Sun around Gedi Prime. Um, unfortunately, that also isn't very realistic, and given that it is probably a red dwarf, the, the sun would probably just look like a slightly dimmer, redder version of our own sun. One sort of excuse that I could come up with, and I don't really know any other sort of ways to sort of work around it, is that we see that some of the Bene Gesserit and the aristocracy use these certain uh, goggles to essentially look down at the arena and get a better view. You could maybe argue that these also have some sort of filters and blockers to actually enable people to see this infrared and give them this sort of very interesting infrared sort of sight um, and also for some reason it would also block out the sun a bit more and make it black. I can't really think of any other alternative way as to how this could be made more realistic but I would definitely love to hear about your thoughts and ideas just in the comments below because I'm really captured by this scene and I really want to sort of force this into reality in my own head, if you see what I mean. I'm going to link down below to a website which goes more into detail about infrared cameras and filming uh, from a more filming and production perspective. As an astrophysics student, I can only really talk about the astrophysics perspective, so I'm a little bit more limited on this, although I thought it would be useful to, you know, give my two cents on the, on the scene itself. So definitely comment down below if you've got any further things to talk about, and we could definitely have a conversation down there. But um, with that being said, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.